My name's Mary, and I'm the Director of Youth Services at the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And because our doors are closed and we're not able to have programming here, we're joining you online and reading stories. I'm here to continue reading our current story, Spunky Tells All. This book is by Anne Cameron, and pictures are by Lauren Castillo. It was published by Farah Strauss Giroux in 2011. Now, if you remember, Spunky is Huey and Julian's dog. And the family's decided that Spunky needs to have a cat in the house, too. So they've come home with Fiona. And now we're going to find out how well Fiona and Spunky get along. Fiona rules. I thought. I reflected. I hoped. If I ignore Fiona completely, one day they will take her back where she came from. Some very old, very patient dogs, but probably not many, might have said my attitude was harsh. Fiona's only a kitten, a kitten in a panic. Not so, however. She did behave differently after she settled down. She quit climbing curtains after she made a bigger hole in one and fell. She stopped hissing at me. When she saw me, she looked away. She pretended I didn't exist. She didn't run so much. She didn't knock into my water bowl no, instead, right in front of my eyes, every day, she scooped all the water out of my water bowl with her paws and made a puddle on the floor. Then she took my nibbles from my food bowl, one by one, and set them in the puddle. I liked my nibbles crunchy. I liked them in my bowl, not on the floor. Since I was ignoring her completely, there was nothing I could say about this. I vowed to continue ignoring her, to forget her presence, to be peaceful. I couldn't get any peace taking walks with my family, though. Fiona had to go along. I was always on my yellow leash. Fiona didn't have a leash. She ran off to smell all the smells I would have liked to smell. On her first walk with us, we saw a man up a ladder, sawing a branch off a tree. We all wanted to keep walking, but not Fiona. She had to butt into the branch cutting. She had to be involved. She had to get that man's attention. Fast as anything, she ran up the tree and jumped down onto the exact same branch the man was sawing off. She hung from it upside down, crying, help me. This man was a sensible person. He ignored her. Or maybe he couldn't hear her. His saw was very noisy. She cried. He kept sawing. She was way, way out on a limb, a big, thick branch that was being amputated and was going to land on the ground with her under it. I watched. I tried not to wish her a fatal outcome. Finally, I broke my rule and didn't ignore her couldn't help it. I yerked. Jump, fool cat! She just hung on crying. Help me! Michelle and Huey and Julian waved their arms and shouted. What? What? said the man. He stopped sawing. 
Please help our cat. Please rescue her. Oh, it's a cat, the man said. I thought it was a squirrel gone loco. He hung his sorrow over his shoulder and pulled Fion Fiona's claws loose from the branch. She spat sawdust. Electric saw whining sounds came from her belly. I was afraid those sounds were a new talent she had discovered and would keep. The man climbed down the ladder, brushed sawdust off Fiona, and put her in Michelle's arms. Thank you, Michelle said. That's one fool cat, the man said. I'm afraid so, said Michelle. Fiona, you're trembling. You're a nervous wreck. We've all had enough excitement for one day. We turned around and headed for home. Our walk was over. The worst walk I'd ever had. We hardly gotten out of the backyard. I'd seen nothing. I had smelled nothing. A week went by. Every morning, Fiona walked with us. Every morning, there was some kind of a problem on the walk a cat emergency of some kind, a cat catastrophe, a cat cataclysm, a big crow attacked her. She stepped in an anthill. She got her head stuck in a hole. She got lost in the park. And I never got a decent walk. Not one decent walk. At my age, a dog needs at least one decent walk per day. Ignoring Fiona was useless. One morning, while she was removing my nibbles from my bowl, I had a talk with her. I didn't bring up the nibbles first. I didn't want her to know that her soaking them in water bothered me. Cats stay behind when dogs take walks with their families, I said. She said, dog, I am not just any cat. I am Fiona. Fiona never stays behind. She called herself by her own name. That confused me. It made me feel as if there were two Fionas, when one of her was more than any. Fiona, I said, at night, why do you get into the blanket cave with Huey and me instead of sleeping in Julian's blanket cave? Huey's is better. It's warmer because there are two of you in it, she said. But he's my boy. That's our blanket cave. It was. Why not be comfortable? I coaxed. Julian's blanket cave has much more space. Fiona extended her ivory claws. She studied them in a leisurely way. That's no problem, dog. When others are sleeping, I push. I always get all the space I want. She on. Her breath carried traces of wild smells from our walks that I had never sensed at all because of being leashed. They made me feel desperate. I had to know what I had missed. So what did you nose on our walks, I asked her. Beetles, under a fallen log, wild catnip, fabulous. An owl, fish, what kind of fish? By the lake, rotting ones. It was more a stink than a smell. She had smelled dead fish and I hadn't even gotten close enough to sniff them. Truly, 
This is a world without justice. Dead fish, I said. <gasps> My favorite. It's so good to roll in them, to wear dead fish perfume when you go hunting. I am a great hunter, she said. A Balinese has no need for dead fish perfume. And she stuck her nose in the air. I should have walked away, but her nose attracted me. I thought, if I touch her nose, I'll smell a little bit of all the things that she has smelled. I never wanted to touch noses with her before. May I touch noses with you? I asked. If you wish, she answered, as if she were doing me a big favor. Such a cool and tiny nose, but calm, not twitchy like the bunny's noses. Under the scent of soggy nibbles, I smelled the tiniest bit, but most awesome trace of dead fish perfume. I couldn't stop myself. I thanked her. Dog, any time, she said. May I ask you another question? Dog? You know. Fiona, I don't mean to criticize, but why do you always drink out of my water bowl instead of your water bowl? Your water bowl is better. And why do you mush all my nibbles into the water you pour out of my water bowl? Nibbles taste better that way. Fiona, am I always going to have to share my nibbles? She batted a wet nibble across the floor. Yes. She washed her paws in my water bowl and licked them dry. Please, Fiona, I said. Could you try to leave my water bowl alone? No answer. She cleaned her right ear with her right paw. She cleaned her left ear with her left paw, then started over cleaning her right ear again. I thought she'd already finished with that one, but no. That's how cats are. When it comes to ear polishing, they never finish. About your water bowl, she said. Maybe I will drink out of water. I don't promise I will, but I will think about it. A dog's way. I have become a catologist, a student of cats. So far, my studies are based on only one cat, Fiona. I think that's enough to draw certain conclusions. At least for me it is. Maybe more than enough. So far, I conclude this. A dog's way is not a cat's way. A dog's way is to be loyal, make promises, keep them. A cat's way is never to promise anything to anybody. A cat's way is to live continually considering and reconsidering its pleasures. So when it pounces on them, it never misses. But Fiona had listened to one of my complaints at least. She still didn't drink from her water bowl, but she stopped drinking from mine. However, she still splashed water from my bowl onto the floor and dropped my nibbles in the puddles. I asked her why. Fiona said, it confuses the enemy. I said, do you mean me? No, dog, 
she said, by putting your wet nipples on the floor, I am keeping wolves away. I'm also keeping big cats away. Panthers. I might get along with a panther, but you wouldn't like seeing me around here. I, I don't understand, I said. Dog, don't you know anything? Fiona said. Wet nipple on the floor, scare panthers and wolves. Who told you that? There are some things a cat just knows. She sat like a queen, looking like that huge riddle cat made of stone, the great sphinx that I have heard is in a place called Egypt. Scaring panthers and wolves. I don't see how that works. Have you seen any panthers here? Have you seen any wolves? No, I said, but you see, it works. Or at least it's working so far. And I'm going to keep it up. She continued to spill my water. But she didn't drink it. Instead, she drank from the saucers of the flower pots. She drank from puddles in the park. She drank from the bird bath. For a long time, that was it, as far as I knew. One night, I was sitting next to Huey while he did his homework. Even though he didn't pet me much, I was very happy. Fiona was not around jumping up on his papers and curling her tail around his head the way she liked to do. It was just me and my boy together, the way it used to be. Then I heard Fiona crying. She sounded far away. I, I, I don't know what the matter is. What is the matter with me, with my mind? There I was happy with my boy, and the next thing you know, I was trotting all over the house looking for a cat that I was not missing at all. Good dog can't help being good. It was too active. I got to the white pond room, a room where Fiona likes to hang out. The Fiona noises were coming from it. The door to it was closed. By accident, somebody in my family had shut her in the white pond room. A good place for her, I thought. The longer she stayed there, the longer I could be alone with my boy. She heard the sound of my paws. Dog! Dog! Get me out! She said. I yerfed to her. Be calm. You like them rooms. So enjoy it a while. Dog! Get me out, out, out. Maybe she was in trouble. I trotted back to the boys' sleeping room. I yerked to get Huey to go to the white pond room with me. He said, Spunky, I'm busy. This work was due last week. I could still hear Fiona's cries. Desperate complaints were nothing new for her, but this time she she sounded as if she meant it. I yerfed again. Huey said, Spunky, don't be a pest. I hate whining. It hurts my throat. Nevertheless, I whined. Spunky, are you sick? Go eat grass. Go drink water, Huey said. He didn't move an inch. I had to get him to the white pond room. I took his pencil. He chased me. Stop it, Spunky. Bad dog, he shouted. You could lose hot tamale sauce flavored to tea at chips for good. I didn't stop. I ran all the way to the white pawn room and sat with my noise, nose pointing at the door. There wasn't any noise from inside. I whined. I whined loudly. Huey caught up with me. 
I dropped his pencil. At least you didn't break it, he said. Back to work. Dog, dog, get me out of here, Fiona howled. Spunky, I get it now. Huey opened the door to the white pond room. Fiona, how uncool. You're in the toilet. She was in the deepest and steepest and slipperiest of the white ponds, with her fur soaking wet, her feet and claws slipping and sliding all over and never taking hold. I can't hold on. My legs are giving out. I'm going to drown. Huey lifted her out, all dripping. Dog, she said. I was on the edge of this pond, drinking from it, and then I slipped and fell, and this white pond is so hard, I couldn't get my claws into it. I couldn't climb out. It's pretty and smells good, but the shores of it are so horrible and hard. Are you ever a yowler, Huey said. He wrapped her in a towel. Julian, he called. Fiona got in trouble. Julian came running. He and Huey washed Fiona with soap in the biggest white pond, even though Fiona insisted in her very loudest voice that she didn't want a bath. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? She yelled. They didn't answer. Just kept rubbing her fur the wrong way till it stood up stiff and angry all over. Dog, why are they doing this to me? She cried. I, I don't know why, Fiona, when you already washed in the other white pond. Julian and Huey rinsed Fiona in fresh water and talked to her. Fiona, about the other white pond, the one they call the toilet, anyone could see how slippery and hard the shores are. So why did you go in? You didn't want me to drink your water. Compared to flower pot water, bird bath water, the white pond water smelled better. Anyhow, I am not anyone. I am Fiona. What anyone could see, I don't. I see other things, my special things to see. What can you do with a cat like that who has to do everything her own way, who puts your nibbles in water on the floor, who destroys the peace of your home, who sleeps next to your boy even though you don't want her to? Send her back to the animal shelter hotel, I thought. She looked all wet and shivery and skinny, too. Just the kind of cat that belongs in the animal shelter hotel. But somehow, I couldn't say that to her. I was the one who found you. I was the one who heard you crying, I said. Thank you, dog, she said. Of course, I would have been fine eventually. But you were very kind. Julian and Huey got a fresh towel and dried her until her fur was soft and fluffy. She walked over to me. I sniffed her. She had a sweet soap smell. What a pity. I took a deeper sniff, trying to recover even a hint of her dead fish fragrance. But besides the soap, all my nose could find in the chilly breath of her fur was essence of Fiona, the sparkly, spangly, silly scent of Fiona. So that's where we'll end today. We're reading Spunky Tells All by Anne Cameron. Pictures 
by Lauren Castillo. The book was published by Barra Strauss Duluth in the year 2011. So next time, we'll find out what other adventures Fiona and Spunky have. My name is Mary, and I'm from the children's room at the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>